Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today as we talk about IBM Chiriga Advanced Reporting. I do want to start with giving you a quick overview of some of the feature functionalities of reporting and some of the end results that we might be using here. So I went ahead and logged us in as one of our executive views of our system. So in this case, we have someone who is dealing with a lot of real estate leases, maybe managing their spaces in their portfolio, and also understanding the costs associated with those. So as we scroll down, we see different metrics such as our spaces by type, our buildings by type. Then we can go into things such as project budget. We have all the different options such as different color coordinations, which we can move around based on what's easiest and most understandable for us as an end user. We can filter and add columns here if we wish to do so. And just close those off and have the ability to click into any of these information to open up a new tab and just get a little bit more information there. Everything here is going to be very interactive. So if we're looking at our entire portfolio of spaces, we can easily zoom into things we're a little bit more interested in. We can sell, set different filters here. And everything that you see is going to be downloadable either as a PDF for these graphics or for the charts, we can download those as CSV or Excel if we're pushing those into other um, data visualization tools. Just like in the charts over here, if I click on anything in this graphic, we're able to open up those records down below and see some of those key details before we even click into the record in particular. Let's talk a little bit more about how we create these graphs because they're great for an end user, but we want to show who does these reports, what goes into making them, and how it's still very simple and straightforward even from the producer of these reports. So I'm going to switch personas here, and instead of looking at this overarching um, high-level view, we'll switch over into maybe our space planner view. So his dashboard's going to be a little bit different. He has different graphs and charts based on what he needs to see on his day-to-day -day basis. But from here, we're going to go straight into creating some of these reports. So now I've clicked into our reports dashboard. This is Paul's, our space planner's dashboard here, where he can keep track of all of his favorite graphs and charts. So this is where we save things that maybe we don't want on that front landing page that we're viewing possibly not daily, but still want to keep a really close track on. We can put these here in our favorites. Our latest graphs and reports, pretty straightforward. Anything we've worked on recently, maybe if we've been working outside of our business unit. So we don't want to save these as our favorites, but we still want to get to them quickly. This is exactly where they'll pop up. We can go down the side here and look at some of our graphs. We can look at some of our reports. And these two are going to be identical other than, of course, segregating by reports and graphs. And whenever we click into some of these report names, we have the option to add them to a favorite. Maybe we want to click into one right here. And based on who created it, we have less options across the top. We can always copy anything and copy it into our own report to edit. But you'll notice if I click on one that I've created, I can delete this if I wish to do so. And then we can change our share settings and choose who we want to share that with. I'm going to go ahead and jump into our uh, space availability report right here just to show you how I can change some of the data around and make it more personalized for me as an end user. Because when these graphs come in, sometimes there's a lot of data going on here, which isn't a bad thing, but we really need to determine how we want to use that. So first and foremost, I tend to like to group things together. If I open up my columns on the side, maybe I want to understand what parent building these things are in. So I can see that the Charlotte Watson Center has quite a few different uh, floors in here. So maybe I want to drag the floor in as a group as well. And we have a drop down immediately of everything going on in these floors. You see that I already added a summation value here. So we can see on the whole building, here's how much space we have on this floor, this much space. We can easily add and remove different columns such as area units. And one of my favorite feature functionalities is that we actually have the availability to add columns here. As simple as this seems, in the past, we typically have to have someone go to an IT individual to give them permissions, maybe create an entirely new query to be able to add columns. But we can do this now, again, ad hoc as an end user. So we're going to determine if we want to add text, number, date, date and time, color. All these are options for us now. If I click into any of these, you'll notice that we have our options here of the different column names that we can add and bring together in a function. And we have that list of functions actually in here as well. So this is not necessary to have any type of programming experience. If you do know how to program, you can probably do a few more fancy things in here. But everything that we have is very well documented of how to use it. 
how we can put them together and preview those results. So for example, if I wanted to, if this is coming in as a text column, I could simply say, what is the name of this parent building? Let's add it as without changes. Maybe I want to add that together to the parent floor to make one single column that has both names in it as a new grouping. I can easily do that if I wish to do so. So this is going to be standard across all of our graphs in here. And once we finish these, we can again uh, download these reports or push them to our front dashboard where our, um, our user comes in and sees that first thing when they come into the system. That's the basics of what it takes to edit and copy some of these reports. If we wanted to, we could easily go and create these just from a simple query. For example, if I want to go in and create a graph, I'll choose it from the same report I was just working in. We could add filters. So maybe the query that we're pulling from is for the entire global organization. We don't necessarily want to load all that data to begin with. So we could create a filter before the graph even populates. We can say, all right, name what city you're in. So it pulls down those, um, the data to a little bit smaller manageable amount. I'll skip that for right now, but I do want to show that we have every single basis kind of basic Excel type graph here. And so as long as you know how to use Excel, this is going to be very, very simple and straightforward for you. So if I add a stack column and create a graph here, it'll immediately bring up a page of all of my different query types. So maybe the space units, the different um, cities that these buildings are in. And once we select these dimensions, we're able to say, maybe I want the buildings across the bottom and the capacity across the side. So once we do that, we can then go and see, okay, what kind of space classification is in here? And we can easily bring that out into a nice new graphic. 